with both Flexbox and Grid, we have Align Content and Align Items. They're two properties that people sometimes confuse because they're both aligning stuff. So in this video, we're going to break down the differences between the two and spoiler alert, most of the time you'll probably want to be using Align Items, though we'll also look at a use case for Align Content as well. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to yet another video. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again and if you're new here my name is Kevin and here at my channel I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS and if I can't get you to fall in love with it I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it and I think understanding these two properties and what they do and how they work is a good way to do that. So let's go and dive in and take a look at them. Uh, so here we are in uh, CodePen and it will be linked down in the description below. And I haven't really done too much yet, um, but let's let's start here on both of these guys. And actually, I have a, com a combined one. So we're going to start with Display Flex. We'll also look at how these apply for Display Grid. And so in both of them, we're just setting a Display Flex. We get these flexible items that are shrinking and growing and stuff to fill up their parent. Nothing too fancy. Um, I have thrown this on the individual items just to help them work a little bit better for demo purposes. And uh, what we're going to start with first is doing an align items and the default is called stretch. So if you don't do anything, that's what the default is. But you won't actually see anything change if all your elements happen to be the same height, like in contrived demos such as this one. Uh, so what I have done is I've created an item large here as the middle div. And so on there, we'll come and give this one an aspect ratio, which is a fun property. And we'll do a one over two. So the height of it will be twice whatever the width is. And like that, we have this, you know, there are only this middle one here has actually been targeted, but because their align items is set to stretch, they're all stretching to match the height of that tallest sibling. Now we could change that to a start and then they'll all push up to the top. And you'll notice I wrote start there and not flex start. And so we are actually moving to a world where we won't need flex start. We'll just be able to use start or end. Um, which is really, really nice. Browser support isn't perfect for it yet, but it's getting there. But if you're watching this in the not too distant future, you should be able to use start and end without having to have the flex prefix when you're using flex and not have the prefix when you're using grid, which is super cool. Um, so start pushes things up to the end, the, the start I should say, and brings things down to the bottom. And then we also have uh, center, which center things right in the middle. I think most people understand align items. So let's take a look at align content and let's try align content and throw a center on there and see what happens, which is nothing. Well, that's, that's interesting, you know, why not? And it's because of the difference between a line of items and a line of content and what they're really doing. And align content is a lot like justify content, which we often use, right? With Flexbox, you'll do a justify content. And this is more about the distribution within the parent. And so really fast, I'm just gonna turn these off here just so they actually um, shrink down and we get these little boxes instead. And what I mean by distribution of content is, you'll notice the parent is the red box that's here or in this bottom one, we have the blue box is the parent and there's all this leftover space in there. So when we use something and I'll do it, uh, we might as well do it on the align content. If I do a justify content and let's just do space between like that, what it's doing is it's taking that leftover space available in the parent and taking that space and distributing it between the children. Or we could do this as a center and then it's gonna distribute, it's gonna center the elements and distribute the empty space on the left and the right. So rather than taking the items and changing how they're aligned with each other, it's taking the items and positioning them within the parent. And that's two, two very different things. And so let's take this off for now and turn this back on. Uh, so we can really explore what align content, I just realized that also says align items on it. That's me copying and pasting. This one should say align content, silly me. There we go, that's better. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> and so the align content's not working now because there's no empty space for them to align within the parent. They are, they're, they're taking up all the space. There's nothing to center there really. And another thing that's really important with align content is it can't actually work unless items are wrapping. So what we're gonna do, and we're gonna play around with this first one too a little bit, but we're gonna grab all these divs here. We're gonna copy them and paste them. So I have a lot more. Because uh, we're going to turn wrap on. So right now they're going, they're actually starting to overflow a little bit on the side there. And so on this align content, what I'm going to do is a flex wrap of wrap, which means that now the children are allowed to wrap down and fill up multiple rows of content. And they're still going to behave, but they sort of do some interesting things and some weird things that we're going to talk more about as we keep going through this. 
Uh, but we can see that it's working, they're wrapping. But you'll notice that despite that, the Align Content Center is still not doing anything because, well, technically they're still centered, right? They're, they're, they're taking up the space. They're, there's nothing to center. And that's just like on this one up here, just to, to sidetrack a little bit. If I did a justify content space between on this one, between, nothing's actually going to change because there's no space to put in between them. They're already taking up the full width of their parent container. So in that case, the space between doesn't actually have an effect. When we use things like justify content or align content, we need to have extra room left over in the parent. And this happens much more often, and this happens much more often horizontally than it does vertically, because most of the time we take advantage of how CSS works, and vertically we just let the parent grow to fill the space. As we add more content into the parent, it grows, and we just allow for that intrinsic sizing. Um, so for align content to work, we're also gonna come on here and let's give this a min height of 80 VH. So it grows and it gets really tall. And now you'll notice that these aren't filling up all the space. There's actually leftover space on the bottom and leftover space on the top. If we put this to stretch, they'll actually stretch now and fill up all the available space. Or we could say start, they're gonna to stick to the start. Or we could say end and they're going to stick to the end. So, uh, and of course, we can do our space between, space around. Uh, so let's do that, space, space around, just to throw something else in there. And now it's working just like that justify content was working when we were working horizontally before. So we need multiple rows of content because if you don't have multiple rows of content, there's nothing to justify. We need to have those multiple rows of content to actually justify. And then it's going to justify them and sort of space things out and align things where you want them to be. And so let's actually put this back to center for a second. And let's do an interesting thing. We're on align content, but I'm gonna put an align items on here as well of center. And this is where things get a little funky because you know they're, they're centered here. And it's kind of interesting when this happens because what this is doing is the align items is looking at each row individually. And it's aligning the items within the row that they're living on. And so if we come and look in here, I'm gonna to go to my inspect. And in Chrome and in Firefox, we have flex inspectors now. So let's turn that flex inspector on. And this sort of gives us an idea of how align items is working. It's looking at this row of content and the cells are the size they are because this big one in the middle is big and it's stretching things out. And that's giving these guys a certain amount of space they can live in. So if I do something like start, they're gonna line up to the start and be lined up in the start of that available space they have within their cell. Or if I do an align items end, they all move down to the bottom and go like that. And I know right now you're probably thinking, can I get these ones to be end and these other ones here to be start? There's no way we can actually control that. So no. <laughs> and that's sort of how align content works. I think the align items is a little bit more straightforward, uh, but just know for align content, you need to have wrapping on. So you have multiple rows of content. So you actually have space to distribute uh, between stuff. And on top of that, you also need the parent's height to be taller than that of the children, which usually means you're actually setting a height on it. Uh, because without that, there's no space to distribute once again. Now grid is very similar. So if I change, uh, this won't actually do anything now. But if I come down to here and let's turn off my display flex and put on a display of grid instead, and we have a display of grid, nothing too much happens. So on there, let's also add a grid template columns. And I'm just gonna do a repeat of five, one FR. So we get five columns that are the same size roughly. And it looks just like we had before. And you'll notice it's working exactly like it was before. Grid and flex, once we get into these properties, once the cells are set up, things are very, very, very similar um, as you'll notice. So that it's looking exactly like it was looking before. I can come on my align items and do a start on there and align content and do an end and move everything down. And again, if you're not really sure what's actually going on, open up your inspector, bring it in, turn on the inspector so you can actually see it. And I can actually see my grid placed within the parent now. And let's turn off this align contents for a second. And you're gonna see that by default, it fills up all of the available space. And when I do something like end, it takes it and it makes it as small as it can and pushes it all the way down. And then I can see the individual cells once again, and then I can do my align items and play with that and get them to align within their individual cells rather than moving the whole block of content around inside of the parent. And as I said, most of the time, you're going to be using align items rather than align content, especially with flex.
text box. At least that's my own personal experience. If you have any really good use cases for aligned content with Flexbox, please let me know in the comments below uh, because I'm always looking for more practical examples of it. But with aligned content it, with grid, I find it can actually be really useful. And so let's go over to that use case that I promised for aligned content. And here I have like a, a landing area, headline hero type area. Um, on a very basic demo setup. Let's start by saying that this has a min height of 80, 80 VH. So it should stretch down. It's filling up most of my viewport now, which is fantastic. And on there, I also want to come in and I want to get it centered within that space. And in the old days, what I used to actually do is just use my padding to do that. So instead of having a height, a min height on something, or even with the height, like you can come in and just, you know, if you make your padding big enough on the top and the bottom, then it sort of balances everything out, but it becomes harder to deal with and manage and everything. So for me now, the best way to do that is actually just to come on and throw a display of grid on there. And when I do that, everything sort of shifts around, it moves because, well, let's go and look at what's actually happening. When I do a grid on there, it has the min height of 80 VH. And so it's automatically just balancing everything out within that. All these cells get really big that are in there because these are all direct children. My H1 is a direct children, my paragraph, and then this div with my buttons in there is another direct child. So each one of those just lands on one of those rows and those rows grow to fit the size of what it's living inside of. But then on here, I can just come and I can actually say then align content center and it becomes centered within that space. And now I have that nice and centered. I just have some padding of three. Uh, that padding of three on the side is just giving me my space I have here. Uh, but maybe you want to actually get the whole thing to be perfectly centered. Then a justify justify content of center. And if I do that, boom, it goes right in the middle. And you might say I want it to be center aligned too. So text align center. And you get content and we're getting there. The only thing is I'm using flex for these buttons just to space things out and everything there a little bit. So here we can also do an align uh, justify content of center on that as well. And everything gets centered and we're good to go. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now there is actually a way that we could take this and do this with one property instead of two. And that is a place content of center. And with the place content of center, it looks exactly the same as before because this is a shorthand for the two of them. If you're just wondering about when you should be using flex or when you should be using grid, I have videos on both those topics right here for you to check out. And with that, I want to say a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Jan, Johnny, Stuart, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.